Hi, my name is Ryan from Turtle Bay Exploration Park. Thanks for joining us. You may be hearing how you should wash your hands all the time, but did you know it's not just a boring routine, it's actually scientific. Join us for a hands-on project where we see how a little soap and a little water is powerful against fighting away those nasty germs. We will also spend a little time with one of our newest animal ambassadors at Turtle Bay, Therian the Opossum. We'll learn a little bit more about Rosemary and check out a couple artifacts from our museum, all on this episode of Turtle Bay TV. Welcome to Turtle Bay TV, your personal virtual experience of everything Turtle Bay Exploration Park has to offer, including education, animals, horticulture, exhibitions, and more. Only at Turtle Bay. Welcome to Turtle Bay Exploration Park, and today we're going to dive in with a little bit of science, and we're going to learn why it's important to wash your hands. Now, for this experiment at home, you'll need a couple of things. You'll need a plate, preferably white. You'll need pepper, some water, and some hand soap. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your water, and you're actually going to fill your plate up just enough so that it almost reaches the surface. I'm gonna fill it up a little bit more. There we go. Now, when we're waiting for the water to calm, we're actually gonna grab our pepper, and we're actually going to season our water like this. Now, the pepper is actually going to represent anything yucky we encounter in the real world. Now, this could be germs, dirt, anything like that. Now, what we're gonna experiment with is why it's important to wash our hands. So I'm gonna take my unwashed hand, and I'm actually going to put it in the water. Some things we notice is that my hand is now covered in pepper, and this shows, oh no, there's yucky stuff on there. So what I'm gonna do now is take my other finger, place it into my soap liquid, though this is gonna represent my washed hand, and I'm gonna place it in. Now I want you to watch what happens. Now you might notice that the pepper actually violently went apart, and this is because I actually broke the surface tension of the water. This is why it's important that we're washing our hands. I hope you try this experiment at home and realize that washing your hands is both fun and scientific. I'm Lisa Endicott. I'm the horticulture manager here at Turtle Bay. We're in the botanical gardens and today we're talking about uh, rosemary. And this particular rosemary is uh, rosemary Mallorca pink. Mallorca pink, as you can see, is, well, I'm about five feet, so this is about two and a half feet. It's a great plant to put in your garden near the front of a bed. It's evergreen, it smells wonderful, just delicious, and it, uh, it, you can use it for cooking. And um, it's also um, something that um, pollinators love. This is a pollinator plant. So if you're doing a pollinator garden, this is a really good choice. And it won't get eight to 10 feet tall and 12 feet wide like some rosemaries. Very well behaved, Mallorca pink rosemary. Hi, I'm Amanda Krim, and I'm the Assistant Curator of Collections and Exhibitions at Turtle Bay Exploration Park. Today, you're joining us in our collections facility. Welcome to the vault. Julia, do we have favorite objects? You know, we probably shouldn't have favorite objects because that would be like having favorite children. But I do love an object that tells a good story. What about you? I have yeah. to agree. Yeah. Sometimes those stories are really apparent because they're associated with a historic figure. Sometimes they're less apparent. And this particular basket, when people ask me which my favorite basket is, it's this one. This basket was made by a maker in the Klamath River Basin, and it's a feast-sized mush cooker, mush boiler. Um, so you would heat up rocks and put them into the mush and stir them with a paddle, and you can kind of see inside there's burn marks, a little, little it's been damp and been used. And to me, the fact that this made its way into the museum is fascinating. It's very simple. It's 
it's complicated and simple at the same time. It's made of either a willow or a hazel warp, and then the weft is conifer root, and the decoration is bear grass. And it's the conifer root that actually makes it watertight. You weave really tight, but that conifer root swells up when it gets wet. We don't clean the residue out of these things because you want to actually tell the story of the basket. And the best part was when we did our um, native baskets from Northern California, we didn't write a catalog so much as we wrote some stories from the show. All of our guests, you can actually go and buy this in our museum store and learn a little bit more about our collection. What about you, Amanda? You have a, re I was really excited when you started working for us because you have this deep background with uh, pre-Columbian ceramics, which I love but don't know that much about. So. Uh, what about you? Do you have a favorite artifact? Well, I have a lot of favorites, but I really wanted to talk about this Chaco picture today. Um, it is very near and dear to my heart because I have spent a lot of time working with collections from the Southwest United States. So when you see this piece and you note its bulbous form and its long neck, these are indicators that it's from the Chaco area. Uh, Chaco Canyon is in New Mexico and it was a large center of urban living for the ancestral Puebloans. Uh, today it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a national park. The other really great thing about this piece is the design. So the design also helps us date this piece as well as the form. Um, we can date this to about 1000 to 1150 AD. It is very likely that this pitcher held some kind of caffeinated beverage. It could have been cacao from Mesoamerica, or what I did not know and I learned during this journey is it could also be something called black tea, which was traded from the Southeast United States. It's a pretty um, spectacular coiled piece because it is quite thin and that's how the ceramics were made was coiled. Correct. And I know that in some of the rougher coiled pieces you can actually get people's fingerprints and so we laugh about doing you know sort of CSI um, Chaco Canyon. And that is one of those stories that we can tell with a single object and that's how why we like to take a deep dive and do artifact of the month so we can highlight a thing for our guests and that lives on on the website. Hi everybody, I'm Sharon Clay, I'm the curator of animal programs and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about this little guy. He's one of our newest animals at Turtle Bay and his name is Therian. He is a Virginia opossum. The Virginia opossum is North America's only marsupial. When Therian was born, he was only the size of a bean. That's the thing that's so unique about marsupials that is amazing to us, is that they're sort of pre-born. They're born before they're fully developed, and then they crawl into that pouch of mom, and then they stay on that until they develop enough to be able to come out of the pouch. He came to us, because sadly, mom got killed. He was a sole survivor. And although the wildlife rehabilitators tried to keep him wild so they could send him out, he got a little bit too comfortable with humans. That's why he's so comfortable sitting here with me. And now he's an incredible ambassador for his species. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for more Turtle Bay TV content and subscribe for email updates at turtlebay.org.